video, I'll be introducing the Einstein-Hilbert action and deriving the Einstein field equation. Now, let's look at the Einstein-Hilbert action. It takes in a metric g when it returns is the integral over the entire manifold of the square root of minus the determinant of gij, like this, times the Ricci scalar tensor. And this is going to be the simplest action. It's just an integral with this thing that's in nearly every integral, and then the Ricci scalar tensor, which is the basic tensor that you can make with two derivatives. Okay, because um, if you have R is going to be the Ricci tensor, uh, put with the metric like that, where the Ricci tensor is going to be the Riemannian uh, contracted with itself, K, I, K, J. This is like the simplest action. It just has this very basic object in it and the Ricci scalar tensor. And so what we do is we look at the variation. Okay, and the variation, remember, of say a function f is going to be f plus epsilon eta. Okay, it's just some small change in the function, a small variation. And some properties of this is that the variation of f times g is equal to the variation of f times g plus the variation uh, plus f times the variation of g, right? And then the variation of g composed f is going to be the variation of g composed f times the variation of f. So it has a chain rule and a product rule, and it also has the Leibniz rule, that the variation of the integral of f is equal to the integral of the variation of f. It works just like a derivative, is what I'm trying to tell you. It's very heavily related. So we could just use the same properties as the derivative, practically. Okay, so now, the variation of our action s, g, is going to have to be the variation of this integral, m square root, instead of writing the determinant of gij, I'm just going to write g. That's a shorthand for determinant of gij, okay? And then times the Ricci scalar tensor, okay? The variation I can then move in to the um, integral using the Leibniz rule times r, like that. And then I can use the product rule to get the variation of the square root minus g times r plus square root minus g times the variation of r. Over here I'm gonna do the actually quite simple variation of the square root of minus g. Okay, because it's going to be equal to, using the chain rule, 1 over 2 rad g, rad minus g, sorry. And then we take the derivative of a t determinant, which as you can prove, it goes like this, it's going to be the determinant g prime is going to be the determinant of g times g inverse times the derivative of the matrix itself, okay? Over here, we're going to have minus g times g a b times not the derivative, but the variation of g lower a b, okay? And I have a minus g over square root of minus g, so that this is going to be one half square root of minus g times g a b times the variation of g lower a b. So now I'm going to do the variation of the Ricci scalar tensor, which is much, much more difficult. So now what we can do is we can say that the variation of the Riemann tensor, because the Ricci is defined by the Riemann. Uh, I remember what the Riemann components look like, okay? And it's going to be del, I choose k, of gamma ijm minus the variation of m, because I choose that, gamma i, then I'm going to have jk which is the opposite of m, plus gamma i, I choose one of them, I'm going to choose k first, k n, times gamma n at the top, and then the other two, j m, minus gamma i, then I'm going to have um, 
choose one of them, it's going to be m, n, times gamma, n, then jk. Like this, and so, using the properties of the variation, which are pretty much the properties of derivatives, uh, note that the variation can be swapped with the derivative as it can be with the integral, so that we have del k of the variation of gamma ijm, and then minus del m of the variation of gamma ijk. Then using the product rule, I'm going to have the variation of gamma ikn times gamma n jm minus gamma i uh, plus, sorry, gamma i kn times the variation of gamma n jm minus the variation of this using the product rule again variation i m n times gamma n jk minus gamma i m n times the variation of gamma n jk now what I do is I look at the variation with respect to k of the uh, the covariant derivative with respect to k of the variation of gamma i j m. Replacing the partial derivative with a covariant derivative here. So that when I do it out, I'm going to have the partial with respect to k of the variation gamma i j m minus, and then I'm going to have gamma, I'm going to choose i for this one, so i is at the top, so I need a dummy at the bottom, then I'm going to do it with respect to k, times the variation gamma, okay, I chose i, so I replace it with the dummy index, jm, okay, this is plus, sorry, minus, because we have a bottom indice, gamma, okay, I'm going to choose j, so that I need a dummy on the top, j on the bottom, and k on the bottom, times the variation gamma i, replace j with n, and then m. Okay, and then minus another one, it's going to be gamma n at the top, because I'm choosing m, then I'm going to need m, sorry, mk, times the variation of gamma, then I'm going to need i, j, n, because we replace m with the dummy variable. Okay, so here we have del k of the variation. Right here we have what is right here, except the indices here are symmetric, so I, they're the same. Right here, I'm going to have this one, except flipped around. Okay, and this one doesn't show up, but there's a way we can deal with this by doing the covariant derivative in respect to m, of the variation of gamma i j k. That's it right there. And if I take the negative of this, so that all the signs flip around, what you see is that this one is right there. This one is going to be right here. This one is going to be right there. Yeah, right here, except these two are flipped. And this one, course, is the same thing as this one, except these two indices are flipped. So that if I add these together, these two cancel each other out, and I just get the variation of the Riemann I, J, K, M. Okay, it's all just, the, they're all there, except out of order, and these two cancel each other out, so we're good. And so, by this, by this argument, this is equal to nabla K, variation gamma I, J, M, minus nabla M, variation gamma I, J, K. And so that the variation of the Ricci non-scalar tensor field is going to be the variation of Rheem K I K J is going to be equal to, okay, now I just need to replace them. 
K is the second index, so that that's going to be Navel K of ga uh, the variation of gamma. Okay, we're going to have K at the top, then the other two, IJ, minus Nabla M, which is J, of gamma K I K variation. So now the variation of the Ricci scalar tensor is going to be equal to the variation of R I J times G I J, which by the product rule is going to be the variation of R I J times G up I J, plus I'm going to do R I J times the variation of G I J up. Okay, now this one right here is going to be nabla k delta gamma k i j minus nabla j delta gamma k i k okay that one right there is that and i'm going to multiply it by g i j like that and what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to Combine these so that it's going to be nabla k variation gamma k i j times g i j. Okay, and then I'm going to do minus. I'm going to use the product rule here. So if you imagine evaluating this, I have this term and then another term, which would be the variation of gamma k i j times the covariant derivative. Uh, k of g i j. And then I'm going to have minus variation j delta gamma k i k times g i j. Then add, because I have a minus sign here, delta gamma k i k times nabla k of g i j. Nabla j. Like that. But as we know that the covariant derivative of a metric is just zero, so that these two cancel each other out. Right here I'm going to replace, because all of this has Einstein's summation in it, I can re replace any two of the variables. So I'm going to make this a k. I'm going to make the j a k and the k a j. Okay, the k is going to be j. I just swapped the j and the k variables, which works because we have the Einstein summation. The name of the variables don't matter. Now I have this covariant, this covariant, so I get one big covariant, which is going to be the variation of uh, gamma kij times gij minus the variation gamma uh, jij times g i k. And look at that. This is simply going to be nabla k j k for some tensor j. Okay? And then don't forget that in finale you're going to have that plus r i j times the variation g up i j by the product rule. So now I have these two formulations and so I can now plug them in to the previous formula we had which was uh, the integral of this plus square root minus g times the variation r. Plugging in I get the integral over m. There's a square root minus g here, a square root minus g there. Factor those out then on the inside, I'm going to have r times all that. So 1 half r g a b times delta g lower a b. Then I'm going to have plus this, nabla k j k plus r i j times the variation g i j like that. Okay. So now, what I'm going to use is the fact that this actually goes away when you take the variation towards infinity. This actually goes away. 
The reasons are sort of complicated, so I'm not going to go into extreme detail, but know that by doing Stokes' theorem and by using the variation towards infinity, you can in fact prove that this term would go away in the final integral. And so now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the fact that this right here is the same as minus g lower ab times delta g upper ab. Now, how does this rule work? Basically, what you do is you say g a b times g a b equals delta um, a b like that, and then you take the variation of both sides, and then you get two. Uh, you get the variation g a b times g a b plus, and I'm gonna have g a b times the variation g up a b. It's going to have to be equal to, this is just a constant, so it's zero, and then subtract it over, you get that. And so there, we're going to have the integral over m of the square root of minus g. Right here I have a variation of g a b upper, right there I have a variation of g a b, I'm going to replace i with a and j with b. Right there I have the variation of g a b upper, so I'm going to have multiply the variation of g a b upper times, then we're going to have minus one half r, because I needed that negative right out front there, g a b plus r a b, and that's it. And now, the principle here is that this has to be equal to zero. And remember, this is for an arbitrary variation for any of those etas, for any of those epsilons. For any variation, this is zero, by the fundamental theorem of um, variational calculus, then I have that minus one half r g a b plus r a b has to be equal to zero. Now this is close to the Einstein equations, except there's something else. Is that usually when you're doing this, you'll have a new action s tilde which would be equal to this Hilbert action plus some other action. Okay, and this action would also have a variation, and so when you do the variation of this, when you end up getting over here, if you look at those, those variations, you get 8 pi g times t a b. And those are the Einstein field equations. Hope you enjoyed this video took forever to do. I had to keep redoing it over and over again. Thank you. And that's it.